In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a lithium battery from a company called Golden Mate. Golden Mate sent me this battery, the LFP12100, which stands for 12 volts, 100 amp hours, and show you how I use this thing, how it might benefit you, how it benefits me, at least when I'm out camping. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is how I use my solar panels to charge up this battery and how I drain this battery to actually get some use for it when we're out camping, enjoying the great outdoors. Now, if you're familiar with camping at all, one thing that you're familiar with is where your batteries go. These are where your lead acid or gel batteries go, your AGM batteries. Lithium batteries don't necessarily want to live out here. They don't like the temperature when it's cold, and quite frankly, they need to be kept inside, I think, where they're taken care of. Now, I really enjoy camping, so being out in the great outdoors like this with a campfire at night and the beautiful scenery that we get out here, I absolutely enjoy this. So not taking a generator with us when we go camping is really a big thing. And having batteries that will last and being able to charge those up is what is a make or break situation for me and my wife when we go camping. Now, if you've never used lithium batteries before, there's a big difference between a lead acid battery, AGM, and a lithium battery for a few different reasons. The voltage on your lithium battery stays at a higher voltage, usually 13 to 13.2 volts, while you're draining the battery. And that's a good thing when you're running an inverter because it keeps that voltage at a consistent level. And you do want that. I used to use lead acid batteries for all my camping trips because, well, that's just what everyone has when you have a camper. Lithium batteries are a game changer in the sense that you don't get voltage sag, which is when you put a load on the batteries, the voltage stays high almost to the very end. In a lithium battery, you can drain down to 10% or less, depending on what the BMS lets you do. Lithium batteries have a BMS or battery management system in the battery pack to manage all the cells to keep them uh, evenly charged and evenly discharged. It's a very important thing to do. Now for this test, we're gonna be using my inverter. I've got two different inverters in my camp trailer. And for me, it's important because the big inverter, I've got a 3000 watt inverter, it draws a lot. It draws three amps sitting at idle, and then you put a load on it. But 3000 watts is a big deal when you're trying to run a uh, microwave, maybe a hair dryer for my wife, and a straightener or a curling iron. And the other way of drawing power is a 300 watt, a very small inverter, and this is a pure sine wave inverter. One of the requirements for out, being out camping is my wife wants to run the hair dryer. I don't really have enough hair for that sort of thing. I just let it dry out here in the great outdoors. Now I'm monitoring, I have Victron equipment, so I'm monitoring the draw, both the solar, the solar panel charge controller, you're gonna see that in a little bit, and the draw from the battery with my Victron equipment. And you can see that when you're running the uh, hair dryer here, the draw that comes with it is only 30 amps or so. It's not that big. This battery can pull 100 amps. Now I've tested it uh, when I first put this in and it will trip about 104 amps, which is pretty good. I think it's very important to know the limitations of your battery so you take care of them. Running your battery at 100% draw and draining your battery to zero, I think is really bad for your battery long-term. It'll just reduce the life cycle of your battery and that's bad. Now, even though the BMS will go more than 100 amps and you shouldn't go more than that, for me, I believe in fusing and breakering uh, the circuits in your camper electrically. So I have a 125 amp terminal fuse that goes right on the terminal, the positive side. And during a catastrophic event, that 125 amp breaker or a fuse is going to blow. They're not cheap at 16 bucks, but I think it's important to have that protection. The second circuit protection I have is a 100 amp uh, resettable breaker. That's after the fuse. so. If the load that comes on the system is more than 100 amps, that's going to trip and protect the overall system. Now, I've designed my electrical system to be 100 amps max because that's what the battery can do, and I want to protect it for that. There are going to be times when someone's not going to pay attention and it's going to have a heavier draw than that, and I want the system to shut off and not have a catastrophic failure and start a fire or have some sort of an explosion. And lithium batteries, well, they're just not the same as lead acid. Now, what's nice about the draw here on the hair dryer, the hair dryer has two settings, a low and a high. In the high setting, it's about 130 amp draw. So that means it's going to be 13 amps AC volts, 10 times that for DC on average when you do the conversion for an inverter. 
and that's just too high for running it in our camper this way. So we're gonna be running this test on low power. Now the draw for this load isn't that great. It's probably 50% the capability of what this battery can do. You can see on the Victron controller here, this app that both does my solar panels and the battery, you can monitor the draw real time to see what's going on. Now I've turned off my solar power generation for this test so I can actually see what current is being drawn. Now I'm also running my refrigerator and a couple of ancillary accessories. So the draw is about three and a quarter amps just sitting idle. Now the big thing to note here, I think, is the voltage drop. The voltage stays about 13.1 volts and that is really good because an inverter likes consistent voltage while it's being used. Now for us, running a hairdryer isn't a lot of load, but if we're running the microwave or some other device that needs to run a long time, that can make a big difference. Now, one part of this test that I didn't get to record was we had some e-bikes out. My son-in-law brought some e-bikes out and that was 55 amps DC draw through the inverter, of course, so that it could charge. It's, I think it had 62 volts was what it needed to charge with. That was an incredible draw and the system handled it perfectly. Now, the advantage to having a solar system charging your battery is that when you've got the sunlight like this, um, I've got about 450 watts worth of solar coming in. Immediately that'll start charging in and it will help take some of that load directly off of the battery. So if you do have some heavy loads that you're trying to run, just know that you can compensate with that using solar panels. That's a good thing. The television itself takes about uh, three to four maybe five amps depending on what kind of uh, screen what kind of movie you're putting on and running all those accessories in the camper at night when everyone's trying to go to bed keeps the grandkids keeps mom and dad and of course keeps grandparents happy everybody likes a happy camper so this battery for us has performed fantastic during our couple trips out uh, seeing this battery work having draws on it and filling it up with the solar panels it's worked fantastic i'm pretty sure if i had one of those uh, battery uh, testers you get from Western Radio that you could do the same test draw from end to end. But you know what? I'm more of a practical person and I like to see how it actually works for me out in the field because everyone else has done those reviews and shown what the batteries have. It's pretty standard that a lithium battery is good up until the very end. So for me, this Golden Mate battery, the 100 amp hour version, has been really good for me. It does say that it comes with a cold temperature sensor, but since I don't have the ability to test in cold temperature to verify the cold temperature sensor works and test it during winter. But for now, it is summer and we're going to do more camping with this battery. And for me, this is not an $800 battery. I think at the time of the video it was close to $299. If you like to get out and not have to spend a ton of money on a battery, but you want the functionality of 100 amp hours, this battery seems to do it. I want to thank Golden Mate for sending me out this battery to test. This was an awful lot of fun seeing how this battery works. It performed flawlessly in our tests that we've done. If you got some use out of this video, click that like button down below. Make sure you also check the description for any coupon codes or discounts that could benefit you if you want to purchase one of these batteries as well. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.